I used to love working third shift. There's just something special about that time, late at night when everyone else in the world is sleeping, that makes me feel truly alive. Ever since I was a teen, I was what you would call a night owl. Sleeping all day, staying awake all night, it drove my parents crazy. They thought it was just a phase, but I never grew out of it. So I guess it was more of a personality flaw. Because of this quirk, I knew early on that I would need to find a job that fit my sleep schedule. I worked for a time as an overnight clerk at a gas station before moving on to stocking the shelves at a chain store and finally finding my calling as a security guard. My first security job was guarding the gate for a factory. I worked from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. four days a week and loved every second of it. The truckers that brought the overnight deliveries were the best people I've ever met and the law of activity in the wee hours between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. were a welcome time to play games on my laptop or read. From there, I moved on to become the overnight guard at a hospital, where I worked shorter hours but more days a week. I didn't like that one as well, mostly because of the patients and the fact that it was pretty active even in the middle of the night. People don't stop getting hurt just because it's late, and weekends were even busier thanks to those individuals that couldn't handle their alcohol. My next security job was probably my favorite of all time. I was the overnight guard for a zoo, getting to see the animals up close on a regular basis and explore the place when there was no one else around. That was the job where I also met the most amazing woman I've ever known. I would have married her and stayed at the zoo until I retired, if not for a change in management and the fact that she turned out to be already married. After that, I took a couple of months to myself before landing my most recent, and probably last, overnight guard job. Something you should know about me other than the fact that I'm a night owl, is that I absolutely love horror movies, books, and games. Anything scary I'll pick up without a second thought. I don't care how gruesome or lame it is, if it says horror anywhere on it, I want it. I always dreamed of working as a night guard for some creepy place. Bonus points if it was quiet enough for me to read a book or watch a scary movie in peace. It was about three months ago, and I was browsing the web for job openings, hoping to land something cushy for a bit. I had only been searching for a couple of hours when I spotted the post that would change everything. Overnight caretaker slash guard wanted for historical building. It seemed like the perfect gig at the time. 12 hour shifts, seven days a week, great pay and benefits. It was everything I could have wanted. I called the number on the ad spoke to someone named George who apparently watched the place during the day and set up an interview for the following week. I wasn't expecting the building to be quite so creepy and I definitely wasn't expecting to see a cemetery on the property. As I climbed out of my car, I was convinced that I had actually stepped out of reality and into a horror movie. Vines climbed the brick walls that must have seen at least two centuries pass there weren't a lot of windows that still contained glass, though they all appeared to have bars to keep people out, or maybe in. As I climbed the stairs, I imagined the front doors swinging open to reveal doctors and nurses waiting to sweep me in and lock me up. The old brass handle felt warm as I grabbed it and pulled, a gust of cool air releasing from inside as the portal opened. I nearly forgot why I was there as I peered into the entrance hall, complete with a large staircase leading up to the second level and an extremely shiny vinyl floor. I stepped in, the door closing behind me a little louder than I expected, and made my way into the first door on the right as I had been instructed to do when I scheduled the interview. The room was clearly equipped as a modern security center, 
with several monitors hanging on the wall next to the desk and a TV and radio sitting off to one of the corners for those really slow days. To my surprise, George was nowhere to be seen. I wasn't sure what to do at first, wondering if maybe I had written down the wrong day or time. But as I was about to turn and leave, I heard footsteps coming through the hall outside. Mr. Lawrence, welcome. I'm glad you found the place okay. Have a seat, he said as he strolled into the room, motioning toward a chair near the desk. The actual interview was shorter than I anticipated, with a job offer coming in the first 10 minutes. Apparently there had been several applicants, but only a couple of them had made it through the front door and I was the only one who didn't appear to be scared of the place. I actually kind of like the building. It reminds me of an old hospital in a horror movie, I said. Funny you should say that, because it was actually used in filming a small budget movie a few years ago. Something about a family moving into a house that turned out to be haunted. It was actually pretty well done for having hardly any money to film it. The building itself did used to be a hospital. It closed down in the 50s and sat vacant for a lot of years before the guy that owns it today bought it to fix up as a historical site. He has crews out here a couple times a month working on various things. You'll be working overnight, like the ad said, and mostly just keeping an eye on things. Our former night watchman retired, his last day was last Friday, so the sooner you can start the better. There isn't really a lot that goes on here, and we've only really ever had to chase people out a handful of times. I told him I could start that night and filled out all the requisite paperwork, excited for a chance to check the place out. He showed me the break room, where coffee could be found any time, and donuts were brought in once a week. A brief tour of the place revealed the building was larger than it looked from the outside, with a full basement where I was told ghostly howls could be heard at night. This last part I took as a joke, though I couldn't really tell if he meant it. The first few weeks on the job went pretty smooth, and I was really starting to settle in. I explored the building inside and out, and even figured out that the ghostly howl George mentioned was caused by the change in air pressure between rooms in the basement. Everything was going great, and it was quickly becoming one of my favorite jobs, at least until I found the book. I was wandering around the second floor one night when I decided to have some fun. There were these old wheelchairs up there, and most of them seemed to be in fine working condition, so I pulled one out and started running up and down the hallway with it. I would start at one end, pick up some speed, and jump in the seat and see how far I could coast. It was more fun than I should have been having at work, but my inner child needed to get out. On one of these runs, I misjudged the angle the chair was facing and wound up toppling out and smashing into a wall, making an awful large hole. After I recovered from the wreck and realized what I'd done, I started to panic. How would I explain the giant hole in the wall without losing my job? As I contemplated the lie I would need to come up with, I spotted something protruding from the space that now existed between the hall and one of the rooms. Reaching my hand in, I felt the leather cover of a large book and pulled it out to find ornate decorations and a title written in what I assume was Latin. That should have been my sign to put the book back and just walk away, but apparently I had not paid enough attention to the movies I had seen involving that exact scenario. Finding an old book hidden away is never a good thing, and opening and reading it might as well be a death sentence. As the cover peeled back, I knew right away that nothing good could come from the thing. There were crudely drawn pictures of what appeared to be people being tortured, and the whole book was written in some kind of weird script that might have resembled something from the ancient world. As I rifled through the pages, I came across one that caused me to stop and stare. I'm not exactly sure what happened next, but the weirdest sounds I've ever heard in my life started coming out of my mouth. I think I might have even blacked out for a couple of seconds, but when I came to, I found myself standing there in front of a man with a red goatee, bright purple eyes, and what looked to be horns on his head. He kind of reminded me of a car salesman with his hair slicked back and a full business suit bringing the whole look together. You have no idea how long I've been stuck in there. Thanks, bro. 
What can I do for you? He said, a smile crossing his face as he spoke. Uh, who are you and where in the hell did you come from? I asked, nearly falling to the ground. Where are my manners? I'm Theo. I'm what you might call a demon, though we're not what you all make us out to be. I was trapped in that book by a priest in the 1700s. He was just mad because I turned his wife into a chicken. I was bound to serve him until he locked me away. Now I'm yours. My demon? Well, yeah, like I said, we aren't really what you all make us out to be. I have to serve a master here on earth until they die. I normally get passed down to offspring or sometimes handed off to friends, but that priest was the worst one I've ever served, he said as he put his arm around my shoulder and we started walking down the hall. So you're like a genie, but with unlimited wishes? I asked. Oh God, no, don't compare me to them. Genies are, ooh, he said. As we reached the office, he explained that he would handle anything I asked him to. Apparently, he has some pretty great powers and I tested them out by having him create a pizza for me as I had forgotten to pack a lunch that night. He was able to whip one up in seconds, even providing a beer to go with it. I had him fix the wall for me and zap in a few different things before the night ended. He informed me that he was tied to the building for the short term and that he would come back out for each of my shifts to keep me company and help however he could. This seemed like a great setup at first, but it's become a nightmare in recent weeks. Every night he asks me to help with random tasks around the building. These are things he says he can't do, like painting odd symbols on things and moving things around. It's getting to the point that I'm not comfortable being around him, but he threatened to come for me if I don't return each night to help him out. When I ask what we're doing, he just tells me to chill out, usually placating me with beer. Some of the symbols he's asked me to paint look familiar, and I think I saw them in the book when I found it but I'm not allowed to see it anymore as he's hidden it away. I thought about telling George, but I've been forbidden from telling anyone with the threat of death, and I'm at risk even writing this now. I think he's planning something, but I'm not sure what, and I'm not sure that I want to know at this point. If you're reading this, it may already be too late. There's an eerie feeling in the building now, and with each new symbol I draw, I swear I can hear the howling from the basement growing louder. I used to love working the third shift, but now I'd do anything to avoid it. <laughs>